Hi everyone. Uh, today I want to share another technique using these fun dies called Picture This. And there's so many fun ways to use these dies. And I showed a card where we used the cutout circles as kind of a peekaboo for these cute little chickens or any other stamp you have. Here it is with a different stamp set. So fun to use them as little um, cutout, little holes, little windows for some greetings or little images. Um, you can use these leftover circles to make um, a card. But I also wanted to show another technique called the spotlight technique. And in that technique, you're going to highlight just a selected area. So these dies kind of do it for you. In the past, maybe we punched out an area or die cut an area out. And here you can do a whole section of areas <laughs> at one time. And then you're only going to color the areas that you're highlighting. So that's the spotlight. You're putting a spotlight on certain areas. And so I want to show you how to do that and we're going to make this really pretty butterfly card. And then there's this rectangle areas too and so we're going to make this really pretty daisy card. So I thought I would show you how to do that and let's get started. Now both the Butterfly Brilliance and the Daisy Garden stamp are one stamp. So this looks like it's you know maybe six stamps but really it's just one and this one as well so it's kind of nice you get all that stamping at one time and there's a my tip for that is because it's so big it is harder to ink up so in that instance I like to get out my stamp apparatus so I'm stamping on crumb cake just for a change of pace and this is probably dirty because I just used it So I want to place the cardstock carefully so I know that I've got the image I want. So I am going to kind of move it around a little bit. Now the daisy stamp is actually larger than this piece of cardstock, and that's okay. I think I want it right there. So I'm going to ink up, and the reason why you want it on the stamp apparatus is because when you're inking up something in sections, you might miss a spot. And so with the stamp apparatus, you can go back in and re-ink just a certain area and you know it's going to line up. See how I have to move my stamp pad around? And it would just be such a shame to go through that process and miss an area. So let's see how I did here. I kind of like to just rub it all over. There we go. And see, I did miss a spot. So, because this is lined up, let's see, I kind of missed towards the left side, which would be on the right side of the stamp, right? And we're going to go right back down again, paying attention to this left side. And look how that lined up. I have no problems with uh, shifting images. So that's really great, and I love that I can do that with the Stamparatus. Um, since I have the Stamparatus on my desk, let's go ahead and stamp those butterflies. It comes with two plates, so I'm just going to move this one. And switch it for this one, which is upside down, but that's okay. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to see where I want that. Now the trick is, because this is such a large stamp, and that's pretty unusual, usually they're not this big, it's hard to know where to put the magnet. So, and I kind of do want to use it because sometimes the cardstock will lift up with the stamp. It seems to happen more on the photopolymer, but <laughs> so I did get at least one magnet to help keep it down. All right, so let's ink up this one. Oh, I did pretty good. I think I'm going to get this a little darker here. Okay, nice and dark. 
So that is the Stamparatus. It comes with the magnets. You get two. They're really strong, which is why I have that washi tape on there to help me peel it off. Okay, so we'll, we're done with that part, and now I want to show you how to use the colored pencils to color. I love that Stampin' Up! has different color coloring mediums, and we've got markers, blends, they just added soft pastels, and colored pencils. And so sometimes it's fun to switch it up, and um, I really enjoy coloring, so I like to play with all the different mediums. All right, now here you can kind of move, you know, look at what you have. Like if I put my die this way, I could get a spotlight on the head, but that's a lot of empty space, whereas if I kind of move it here, it shows up this body, this wing. So kind of see where you want to put your um, dies, and then go ahead and cut them out. Now on the rectangle one, you don't have as much play, so you can kind of decide <laughs> which way you want it, but I think that I like it like this. Okay, now of course these dies can also be used as labels. You can put a sentiment on there. You don't have to use them for a specific technique, but it is fun to, to try these new techniques. So what I thought I would do is use the colored pencils, and I want to give you some tips for those. And, um, you know, it's so often that it um, takes a long time to do a video, so I thought what I would do is kind of spotlight a certain area with the pencils, and then I'll do a fast version, like I'll speed up the video, I'll do a fast forward in my editing so that you don't have to watch <laughs> a long drawn out process. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll slow it back down and we'll color a couple daisies just so you can kind of see what colors I'm using and my thought process there. And then um, I'll speed it up again. So that way the video is not an hour long. <laughs> so the colored pencils come in two assortments. I've, they don't come in this case. I've put mine together so that I didn't have two separate boxes. Now, they come in two assortments, like I mentioned, and one assortment has the white in it. That's assortment number one, and that's kind of um, an important one because I think that it's really fun to add highlights, especially when you're coloring on dark paper, or you can even use the white pencil on black or navy, some of your deeper cardstocks, and you can add highlights with the white. So if you can only get one, I would get assortment number one. But if you can get both, then you add more colors to your collection. And I am going to be using some blues from both, um, actually on the butterfly, I'm sticking with the blues in assortment two. However, I'm using that white from assortment one. So um, anyway, think about the colors. If you can get them both, um, the, they're 16 and 12 50 because the $16 one has the black and the white, so it's got a few more um, pieces in it. Okay, and then there's the, here's the pastels, really fun markers, all kinds of coloring options. All right, so I'm using a couple different blues. There it is. Okay, so the blue looks dark. This is balmy blue, and so the, the color is dark here, but it is the... Um, lighter one, and then there's a navy. I'm going to grab that and my white. All right, and we're just going to color the butterflies. So I'll do this big one. And there's really, um, you know, you can do it any way you want. I don't know what color this is. Sometimes the ones that don't have a name on them came in a kit or something, so I think I'll use it. I think it's the same as specific point. Yeah, so we'll see. That's the navy. Okay, so they're the same. So let's put that one back. Okay, so you're just going to color in, and I'm not going to, these are watercolor pencils, which I really love, but I'm going to leave them in a colored pencil look. And of course you can get dark or light tones in the color by pressing harder or softer. So I'm kind of going harder towards the center of the body and then lifting up a little bit to get a softer look further away just so there's highlights and that way even though I've only got two colors of blue here I can get a lot of different tones
of pushing harder towards the center of the body and then lifting the pencil away from the body. All right, now I'm gonna grab this navy and I'm gonna do some areas, much darker. I'm just kind of going by how the artist drew this butterfly for the shaded areas I'm leaving darker just like they did. Okay, and now I'm gonna bring in that white. I think I need my pencil sharpener. Get yourself a good pencil sharpener. Um, so often, pencil sharpeners, cheap ones, chew apart our pencils, you know, and then they break the tips. And then this is by Faber-Castell, and um, it's an excellent pencil sharpener. I love it, so I grab that one, and I use it all the time. My kids steal it because it's such a nice sharpener. All right, I'm adding some white highlights kind of to the back of the butterfly, to the head. I'm not sure how much these will show up in the video. They're so small, but they show up in real life. Okay, so there's one of the butterflies. And then I'll go ahead and finish these butterflies on fast forward. Okay, I finished all my butterflies. Let's put that card together. Okay, I am using a base of Knight of Navy. And then I'm going to put my butterflies right on top. Now you can do this two different ways. You can pop up the frame area on dimensionals and then put the butterflies down inside. Or you can put the frame flat and pop up the butterflies. And I think that both are good options. I've tried it a few ways. And sometimes I like the recessed. Here's one where they're popped up and here's one where they're recessed. And they both are fun and I thought to change things up I'm gonna do this one where the frame is up just because I want it to be different than this one why not so I'm gonna pop up the frame and when you do that you want to use more dimensionals than you normally would normally I would put you know four in the corner and then like a couple here so I'd probably use six I'm gonna probably almost double that <laughs> because I really want to make sure that these um, cutouts show up as cutouts that they're a different different depth than the rest so I'm going to use more than usual it's a little bit crazy but I really want to make sure this frame stays lifted off that background and we'll see which one we like better maybe on the butterflies um, on that flower one I showed you a minute ago I kind of like the recessed ones better but um, I don't know what I'll think about the butterflies. So let's see. You can let me know in the comments which one you like better. <laughs> All right, let's make sure the butterflies are flying in the correct direction. And go ahead and put them down. There, okay. Next I'm gonna just glue in these little guys here. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue and line them up so 
little bit like a puzzle. There we go. Isn't that fun? Okay, so now I want to add some embellishment and a sentiment. I have a lot of scraps, so I'm going to use a little scrap of navy. And the butterfly does not have any sentiments in the stamp set. It is just a bunch of butterflies. So I can grab any old sentiment stamp that I have. And I grabbed, and now I lost it. Here it is. This one, I should show you what it's from. It's from Art Gallery. Um, anyway, it's just uh, thinking of you right there. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'm going to go with birthday because I already have a thinking of you. There we go. And lately I have been, I don't know about you, lately I have been um, embossing my sentiments. Like almost every time. So I'm going to do that again. When I do heat embossing on my videos, I silence the videos because it's really loud, just so you know. <laughs> Now you can die cut this or you can just snip it. I'm going to snip it. There. And I'm going to add that, but I want something underneath. So I'm going to grab some ribbon. I have some white. Be a little fat. Hmm, maybe this one. Now on this one I used some denim ribbon and I then learned that that is on, that is discontinued. <laughs> I'm going to go with this. This is the crinkled seam binding that's still available and I'm going to double it up with this misty moonlight uh, with silver, which is really fun. And I'm just going to double that and tie it, which is always difficult for me. Not the best bow tire anyway, so doubling it, it just adds even more difficulty level for me anyway. My sister's the bow tire. Too big? We'll see. Oh. Okay, yeah, I like that. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put this down with a glue dot. And I lost my glue dots. And then I'm going to create a bridge with my um, dimensionals to kind of go over the knot. So what I mean by that is I'm going to put a dot on either side. And depending upon how flat that knot is, that's good. I might Sometimes I double it. But this one, that crinkled seam binding ribbon is such a great bow for cards because it really makes a flat. It's just 
perfect because it doesn't add a lot of bulk to your card. All right, so there's my butterfly spotlight card, and let's do the daisy one. Here's the original with that denim, and here it is with the popped up and the recessed. It looks like I used the navy pencil more on this one and the balmy blue more on that one. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are popped up popped or, or recessed on those spotlights. Okay, moving on to Daisy. Here I'm using that white again. And I'm using Garden Green and Old Olive on the pencils. And then there's uh, two different yellows. There's Crushed Curry and um, the Daffodil Delight. I'm going to use both of those. So I'm using these like my pencils. And then I'm going to start with the green. Just <clears throat> and again, I'm going to do like I did last time. I'll do one of the areas in regular time, and then I'll do the rest sped up. So I'm kind of putting down a base in Garden Green. But I feel like Garden Green is a little bright, brighter than I want it to be. So that's why I grabbed that old olive and it kind of tones it down just a little bit. So I added just kind of on the veins and just some shadow with the old olive and it just kind of takes it down a notch. And as far as the centers go, I just went Daffodil Delight. And some crushed curry highlights. Now, I have a Facebook page, I'm going to talk about that for a minute while I'm coloring, that I would like you to join. It's a group. And there, it's called Best Paper Cuts Idea Sharing Group. And there, you can post. You can show me if you've done something with these dies or maybe the spotlight technique. Or maybe you can find an old card you did with that technique. It's an older technique. I remember doing it with um, a stamp set called Poppy something. And I loved it then. So when I saw these dies, I was remind, reminded of that Poppy set. So that made me think of these daisies. See how that white looks great on that crumb cake? Now, of course, you can do your butterflies in the multi multiple colors. You don't have to go with one tone like blue, or you don't have to make white daisies. But I was kind of looking for the soft white daisy. Or delicate daisies. They're my favorite. I don't know if technically all daisies are white and the yellow ones I'm thinking of are something else, like Black Eyed Susan maybe. I think you could totally use this stamp for Black Eyed Susan. Maybe even Cosmos. I'm not sure. They're a little more delicate. Not as many petals. All right, there is the daisy coloring, and now I'll speed it up and do the rest. Okay, my coloring is done. I am going to grab this piece of bumblebee cardstock. This time I'm going to go ahead and recess the back, the base, the outline. Okay, and I've already made my grading. Now when I put these down, I did something a little different. 
um, I feel like when you pop them up, you barely see that there's a shadow. You don't get that full effect. So for this, I offset it uh, just a hair, like ever so slightly offset so that um, you see more of that bumblebee peeking out. And I mean just slightly. So maybe you might think it's not worth it. <laughs> but all I did, hopefully my head doesn't get underneath this camera too much. I'll see that when I'm editing. Did I stick my head under the camera? Okay. So you see I've got just a hair of the bumblebee. I just went down and over just slightly. I think it sells the um, outline a little better. And I did this one down and over. Okay, so I've got that down, and then for this one, I'm adding bubble, bumblebee ribbon. Of course I am, right? Because it's perfect, and it's that gingham. It's so cute. Like so. I think this is my favorite ribbon. There's also a, a Just Jade gingham that's adorable. Okay, so then I'm going to glue dot that down. This time I, this knot is thicker than the um, white crinkled seam binding ribbon. So for this one, I actually, <laughs> you can see that I used the back of something else. I actually doubled my dimensionals and I just stacked them too high um, just because I don't like it when my bows, when my sentiments, especially when they're skinny like this, when they rock over the ribbon. So I kind of make a little bridge and I think I can do two more. I make a bridge over the knot just to keep it from rocking. There. That way it's flat, it's nice, it doesn't have a hump. Okay, and then, of course, I thought it was so sweet to add a bumblebee, um, these little bumblebee trinkets. You only need one, and that just that little one bumblebee is adorable. I think so anyway. <laughs> there. Okay, so that is my thinking of you. Now, there is a stamp set called Daisy Lane. Look at it has. It has a daisy. So if you want to do something on the inside, which I do, you can stamp that little daisy. And I'm going to just add that just here at the bottom. we go. And then for the inside of that butterfly card, what you can do Clean off your butterfly stamp. Okay, make sure you did a good job cleaning. Okay, and then you can add a butterfly to your card. You know what? I'm going to pick this up because upside down is driving me crazy. There we go. I just want that little one.
Oh, look at that. It wants to turn. All right. I just want this one. So you can mark it up carefully with a stamp pad or you can grab your marker. All right, and there's the other one. So we've got our Daisy and Butterfly Spotlight Technique cards. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you'll come back and watch another video sometime. Subscribe and think about joining my Facebook group. I would love to um, have you join there and show me what you're doing with the Spotlight Technique. Or we have different challenges during the week, sometimes colors or technique or um, mystery card kits. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Bye.